Neuropathic pain. The classification of chronic pain falls into three broad categories, pain due to tissue disease or damage called nociceptive pain, such as osteoarthritis, pain caused by somatosensory system disease or damage called neuropathic pain, and coexistence of nociceptive and neuropathic pain called mixed pain. Neuropathic pain is defined by the International Association for the Study of Pain as, pain caused by a lesion or disease of the somatosensory nervous system. This definition is broad, covering over 100 conditions. Various nerve-damaging stimuli in the peripheral or central nervous system can lead to neuropathic pain, yet the clinical manifestation of the pain is similar across the different neuropathic syndromes and causes. The characteristic sensory abnormalities are crucial findings to correctly diagnose neuropathic pain and to distinguish this from other pain types. The key challenges in the development of a targeted holistic approach to neuropathic pain management include appropriate diagnosis of the cause of pain, identification of the type of pain and assessment of the importance of its various components, and determination of appropriate treatment. Neuropathic pain syndrome can result from peripheral or central mechanisms. First, we're going to discuss peripheral mechanisms. Peripheral terminals of pain processing unmyelinated C fibers and thinly myelinated A delta fibers can spur the development of neuropathic pain after being affected by metabolic damage, toxins, medications, cytokines, and other inflammatory mediators, resulting in fiber density changes in neuronal hyperexcitability. Along the axon, injuries such as trauma, compression, hypoxia, inflammation, overstimulation, and chemical damage can induce fiber degeneration and alterations in channel expression and composition, in turn resulting in ectopic firing and faulty signal transmission. In response to axonal damage and its sequelae, satellite glia and autonomic neurons promote alterations in their overall numbers, distribution, sprouting patterns, and channel expression. In the dorsal root ganglia and trigeminal ganglia, Primary afferent cell bodies can be exposed to chemical, mechanical, and excitotoxic damage, and in neuropathic pain states demonstrate maladaptive changes in their membrane composition, synapse properties, and synapse locations. The probability of peripheral nerve damage or its progression to neuropathic pain can also be increased by genetic predispositions and hereditary conditions. The ultimate result of the maladaptive mechanisms following peripheral nerve damage is a state of inappropriate signaling from the peripheral neuron to its second-order targets, with multifactorial errors in both transduction and transmission. Now let's talk about the central mechanism. With repeated or sufficiently intense stimulation, spinal and supraspinal nociceptive pathways can become sensitized to subsequent stimuli. With persistent nociceptive input, like that seen in peripheral neuropathy, this central sensitization becomes maladaptive. International Association for the Study of Pain defines central sensitization as increased responsiveness of nociceptive neurons in the central nervous system to their normal or subthreshold afferent input. At the synapse of second-order neurons in the spinal region, this increased responsiveness can involve changes in calcium permeability, receptor overexpression, and synapse location. Also promoting a chronic pain state are microglia, whose hyperactivation triggers the release of pain-promoting mediators. In supraspinal regions, the resulting misbalance between descending facilitation and inhibition is another major contributor to ongoing pain. Maladaptive subcortical and cortical plasticity also contributes to the painful interpretation of incoming signals, with the ultimate result promoting a chronic pain state. If you find this video helpful, please hit the subscribe and bell buttons. And don't forget to like and share this video. Thanks.